Hi, I'm Robin White from Fantasy Wire, and I'm the guy that makes the wire fairies. This section I've called the skin layer. I mean, basically, by now, you should have a figure that's sort of fleshed out, but it's got sort of gaps and holes, and it doesn't quite look right. And it's about putting the sort of final texture on there and getting the final shape correct. So we've, no we've now got to the stage where she is bulked out to the shape that I want her to be. Uh, she's still a little bit thin, but what I'm about to do now is put on, in effect, a skin layer. It's it's like I'm going to, rather than trying to add volume, I'm just going to cover the, the surface up with a, a layer that gives you the texture that you see in the sort of finished product. Now, that is going to add more volume because she's still a little bit thin, but one comes with the other. Because uh, you can't probably tell by looking from the distance you are with the camera, but she's got a lot of big holes in it. I can still see all the way through her. And it is more of a case of just sort of covering the entire surface, uh, which will in effect bulk her up a little bit at the same time. So I'm still using uh, six strands of the 0.9. Uh, and I'm just going to go over an uh, entire surface, filling in gaps, and it's it's very time consuming. This is where all of the time gets eaten up. So effectively, I'm just going to go into time lapse, and just you'll just see me add wire after wire after wire, uh, and it probably won't look a great deal different, but it will be increasing the density, giving a nice texture on the surface, uh, and just looking altogether a, a sort of better finish. I'm just sort of doing this sort of skin layer and there's a detail that I thought is worth sort of pointing out. As I'm fleshing out the arms here, uh, there's a temptation to bring most of the wire over the top and there does need to be some wire come over the top. Uh, but what you need to be careful of is you want to sort of build the arm up underneath on the underside as well, which means you have to put a lot of wire sort of through the armpit. Otherwise, what you'll do is sort of raise this up and you'll end up with a very sort of thin arm and in enormous shoulders. So you've just got to be conscious that a lot of the wire has got to go through, you know, and you, you're obviously going to have to make a path. So I'll put a path right through there. And then that wire will pass through the back of there. And that just allows me to sort of keep on building wire up into the bottom of here. And I'm, I'm also conscious that as I'm starting to fill out this detail and she's getting closer to the shape, I'm starting to put in these muscles here at the, the sort of back. If I sort of turn it around, hopefully it's still in the camera. Uh, this muscle here, which I haven't filled up yet because I've just been basically doing the rib cage. But as I'm sort of getting up to the shape now, what I'm starting to do is build up this muscle and I can just go through the figure here and build it up here at the same time as the bottom of the arm comes in. Very little going on the top uh, because, you know, you'll end it with bodybuilder shoulders. Uh, and I won't do a great deal of this because I, I want to sort of, I'm, I'm very close to adding the boobs uh, and the boobs are obviously going to go here. And then I need to sort of put wire across here to sort of attach to the shoulder. So I don't want to sort of put all of the wire on now because some of it will go with the boobs. It's just pointing out that you do need to be conscious that a lot of wire needs to go under the armpit in order to make sure that the arms are the full diameter. We're going to add the boobs and this is a question we get asked quite a bit as to how to sort of get these right it's probably important to just point out where we are in the build because it is relevant to when you do the boobs i've sort of i haven't finished her legs or the bottom half of her body but i have pretty much got all of the wire on uh, so it needs all sorting out but i've sort of done all the layers as it were uh, it just needs shaping and sort of finishing, but it, it, it isn't complete. I've fleshed the arms out, and they've probably got enough wire on, again, needing shaping and finishing. 
the neck is about the right side, the head is about the right side, but the upper part of the body is still a bit light compared to the rest of it. And that's because I want to leave room to when I add the boobs, I've got somewhere to take the wire. Because if, if it was complete, and all I could really do is add wire to where the boobs are, it would look like they're stuck on. So what I've got to do is sort of create a bit of a frame, and then the wire that sort of forms the mass of them is blended into the bits that are still light. So relatively speaking, it's sort of almost there, and everywhere that's sort of affected by the, the wire of the boobs is still a little bit light in weight. But we have been applying sort of six to eight strands of the 0.9. I'm now going back up to a point, uh, 1.2. And I've just got one piece of wire, so it isn't sort of multiple strands. It's just one strand of wire. And I know you probably can't see it all because I don't have a cameraman. I'm just sort of stood here on my own. Uh, so I'm, and, I've, and I've dropped her down onto a lower stand, so she's a better sort of working height for, for doing this. So I'm going to put this one wire in, roughly pick the height of the boobs, find the, roughly the centre of this wire, so I've got about the same on both sides and I'm going to add a sort of frame like a ghost image of where the boob is going to be uh, very loose. And it's a bit like going back to the beginning, but all I'm doing is creating a sort of loose cage, low density cage for the boobs. So I'm just going to add some white in here and I'm sort of guessing where they are as I add a little bit of wire, I'll start to get a better impression as to how I need to adjust the position. Because it's only one wire and it's relatively strong, you can just sort of poke it through by hand. You don't really need pliers or poking tools. I've started using another tool which you may have seen on the time lapse. I don't know who it's. I normally use this sort of poking tool, which is some old screwdriver that's been sort of sharpened up to a point that, that I can sort of poke through. But just to sort of help me if I want to sort of go into the surface to pluck some wires up so I can create just a loop, I've got a sort of shorter one that's just got a bit of a curl on that and it allows me to just grab a bunch of wires and create a, a sort of route through if I need to. It's quite useful. And it's starting to sort of see the shape now, so I'll just turn it to one side the rib cage comes round and then starts to sweep in to that follow that line to the top of the buttock so basically the boob wants to start just above that sort of bump on your rib cage and you're going to end up with sort of a, another boob above here in terms of positioning so that sort of gives you the rough height in terms of where it is obviously they're going to be on either side but then they're not sort of stuck on the front they're more to one side, so there's there's sort of a mass of it sort of overlaps this side of the rib cage. So you're sort of going to bring it out here, and that helps you when you build up the pectoral muscle, which is the sort of chest muscle here. I think there's a bit of a rule with adding boobs that sort of less is more. There's a temptation to sort of think of them as some sort of cartoon type balloon stuck on the front where they're nothing like that. I think that'll do for that side. So hopefully you can see that, but basically it's just a completely empty sort of frame that's approximately boob shaped. I've just added a bunch of wire there. I've started to go up to here to create a bit more of a frame because it's more like a sort of teardrop. 
it's overlapping the rib cage so it's coming out this way a little bit it looks about the right height at this point in time when i add the main sort of wires i may need to adjust it a little bit but that remains to be seen so rather than filming it all i'm just going to try and get the other side to match this and then we'll pick it up again so i've completed the other side so i've basically got the frame on sort of both sides that sort of uh, match one another approximately but they're just completely sort of hollow frames just to sort of sweep round before I start adding the sort of wire. But you can sort of see that they, they don't sort of stick out very much. It's more just a line from the from the uh, the shoulder down to the sort of boob. And they, they, they do sort of stick out that way a little bit from, from the rib cage. So it's pretty much the same as we've been doing the rest of the body. But all I'm sort of doing now is filling out the sort of shoulders, the pectoral muscle, the muscle down the back here, uh, a little bit more around the rib cage, and just the general area because I can't, and the reason for that is I can't just add wire to just the boobs. So I've deliberately left all of those areas light. I think there's probably three stages to sort of doing boobs. One is, is the, the wire frame that I've created. The second is what I'm doing now, which is to sort of fill them in with wire, put some mass on there. But as you saw there, I was sort of bringing the wire out here. I don't want to, I want, I want to blend it in at the top, but sort of cut straight into the body at the bottom. So you sort of get that sort of uh, tight ridge underneath the boobs. And then the third stage is to sort of almost overlay the whole thing to sort of blend it in. I think because this is so time consuming, I think I'll just put it onto time lapse and then pick up after I've got a bit further. So I've sort of fleshed them out. So we've gone from the cage and then I've put in sort of six strands of the 0.9, sort of fleshed them out. I'm sure they look fine on the camera, but they're very similar to their body was ages ago. they sort of lots of holes in them that, but basically the sort of shapes there. So what I'm going to do now is start sort of shaping them by tapping it into place and taking all of the sort of baggy wires that are there and sort of just teasing the volume to where I want it to be at the same time as sort of reducing them again. So although they, they sort of almost look a little bit too big at the moment, but by the time I've knocked them into shape and if I tap it, under there you start to sort of create that sort of pectoral muscle i've got more wire to add yet so this isn't the end of it but this allows me to get them roughly into the sort of right shape where the volume's all in the right place and get rid of the bagginess I think height wise they look about right so I've got a bit of a rise on the sort of top of the chest here which is right and then the sort of triangle of, of where the sort of boobs come in so you, you, you're not just completely flat there you've got a bit more shape there so the, there needs to be more volume certainly on this boob but and I've started to build up around the back of the neck here and all of this lot is incredibly sort of messy and there's a lot of sort of volume there but I don't necessarily want to tidy it up yet because that allows lots of holes that I can get through. And then when I've finished adding this wire here, I can sort of tap all that into place and sort of tighten it all up. Uh, but at the moment, it sort of looks a bit of a mess. Uh, so we've sort of got there. What I'm going to do now is go down to four strands of 0.9 and just generally start going around the body there's a big hole here. There's a bit missing from that boob. There's sort of gaps in the legs. And I'm going to go around starting to sort of fill in the gaps, tapping it into shape, 
uh, and generally sort of finishing it all. And you'll, I'll do almost as much with a hammer as I do any with, with the pliers. And it's just looking at the lines of the figure. There's, there's quite a, a lot there. So, you know, you can change the shape a bit now. You can start to actually uh, shape it with the hammer. So we've arrived at what I would call the clay state. And it is a, a bizarre sort of thing that it's so dense. You know, earlier on, I pointed out that I could sort of poke through almost anywhere. There's nowhere I could get through this figure now. She's absolutely sort of solid. Uh, and that's all arrived just at the time we've got to the shape that I want, which is that is one of the big challenges of doing this to get it to this density at, as, the, as you arrive at the shape. Uh, but she's all sort of scruffy. So what I've got to do now is go around tapping it all into shape. Uh, getting the lines right to, to, to sort of look right. It involves quite a bit of hammering. And then when you hammer it, you create slackness. So you can sort of go around and just tighten them up. And it's just time to fill in the gaps, make sure the lines are smooth and go all the way over it now. Uh, and then I've got a bit more detail to add here. I want to add some collarbones, some neck tendons, uh, but we'll uh, we'll get to that in a bit. very close to finishing adding the wire now so the boobs are on uh, basically the only thing left to do in terms of adding wire is I want to put some detail across here where she's got some sort of collarbones and I want to build up the uh, muscles across the back of the neck so it sort of doesn't go in and straight up it's more of a sort of curve so I've got to build them up and round the back I want to build up uh, where she would have her shoulder blades uh, and then we can start tidying it up so the first thing to do is to actually force a hole right through the figure, right at the base of the neck where the sort of collarbones end. So if I put two sort of holes through there, and you can see how dense this is now, the whole figure. So I can start there, and then I'm gonna have to try and find somewhere here to actually take the wire through the shoulder it is very dense figure now find a similar sort of spot on this side so if I start from here, same as always, find the halfway point, making sure I've got no stray strands. I'm not going to add a lot of volume. I just want to create a sort of visual line there so the, the viewer's eye actually sees the shape of the sort of neck and where the collarbones would be. So I'll take this one that's come out of this side and find where that actually went through.
Pass that through there. That creates the collarbones. And then round the back, I've got these two bits that I'm gonna just build up uh, a bit of an area here that sort of looks like the shoulder blade and sort of weave it in round the back of the neck to sort of build those muscles up around the back of the neck. And I'll make another pass across here. So I've got a little bit more wire, uh, but I'll put it back on time lapse just to speed it up because watching it in real time is a bit tedious. <laughs> I'm going to add a bit of detail to the face now. So I've got the, the rough sort of shape of the head is sort of done. It's working out the sort of position of the nose. Uh, if you're into sort of drawing and you know the proportions of a face, then you know that half the head is where the eyes are and then half of that is where the nose is. So it actually appears to be quite low down. So what I'm going to do using this little hook tool is pick some wires sort of in the middle and grab, go underneath to, to sort of where the nose should be and create a bit of a sort of loop there. Now I've just got one short, I've got one short piece of, of 0.9 and I'm gonna put it through that and I'm just gonna circle that and pull it into a sort of lump. So that's the sort of position of the nose. So I'll pull that in. I just want to create a bit of a bump there. I'll fill it up in a minute. <laughs> Now I've just got a few strands of, of 0.5, so this is fine. I'm just going to use that as a bit of a framework just to create a bobble of a nose. So just pass this through that knot. <laughs> Created a sort of bit of a button. Now I just want to create the sort of main body of the nose. Just pull some of them wires up. Very easy to just put too much wire on and end up with a massive nose this is very much the sort of invisible panda territory that all you will need to do is create the impression of a nose and that's about it so what i've got to do now is just i'll take these wires out of the way I'll use them to sort of fill up some gaps in the face. And that's sort of the nose done. If I just shape that a little bit, tap that down, so you get a, just a nice sort of profile of a nose. It looks incredibly tiny, and it, it is in proportion, but all we're trying to do is create the impression of a sort of bump in that position. So that's the nose done. Now, the eye sockets, all I'm going to do is hit it with this hammer where the eyes should be. Quite sort of dense. And then just sort of smooth that out a bit. Take that nose sort of back. Now from a profile, 
you're sort of getting the impression that there's a face there. Now, by the time you put the hair on, that's going to be your brain is going to tell you that that's just an attractive female face. That's the only detail that you need. So we're pretty much there now. We've just added the, the detail of the sort of nose and the eye sockets. Now, she may, I'm sure she does look complete, but if I just take the camera and actually look at her sort of up close, nothing about her is sort of finished yet. All I've really done is to put the right amount of wire into the sort of right places. So from a distance, she looks fine, but there is no sort of finished clean lines. Uh, there's lumps and bumps and gaps sort of all over the place. So what I'm going to do now, and this does take a considerable amount of time with no photographic visual difference, is to just go around the whole figure, smoothing the surface out, taking all of those bumps away, and wherever you tap it with a hammer, you tend to create a little bit of slack. So you, you sort of tension it up. You know, you, and you take the tension out by, or you should put the tension back in by tweaking those wires. And it's just go all the way around every bit of a body, legs, feet, and just tap it into shape. And it's going to take me several hours, if not a day, just to sort of go over the whole sort of surface to make sure she's the shape I like. I'll probably add a little bit more wire here and there if I think there's a gap that probably needs filling up but it is just tapping and tightening and making sure that it, you know that everything sort of looks right and they've got the right texture on the surface so I'm just going to put it onto time lapse and just spend a few hours doing that <laughs> Here we are. I've sort of finished her body now. I'm sure I'll spot things, you know, when I'm adding the wings and I'll do improvements. But I've probably spent the last sort of four or five hours just simply going around, sort of tapping her, shaping her. I've added some nipples, very similar to I did the nose, but in a sort of smaller way. Uh, and that's it doesn't sort of add any... Uh, volume but it makes it sort of go more to a point so it looks more like a boob shape rather than spherical uh, try not to make them sort of too sexual uh, so they're just sort of points to create the shape uh, and other than that I have added a bit more wire to the legs there was a few sort of gaps fiddle in some gaps on the feet and it's just gradually smoothing it out and I'm, I'm reasonably pleased with her I think she's she's quite nice like I say I'm I'm sure I'll spot some areas. I can even see one there where it probably needs a little bit more wire just under the arm. Seems a little bit low, but other than that, she's sort of there. So I'm going to move on and start sort of making some wings now and show you how to attach the wings. <laughs> 